status epilepticus, is a common neurologic emergency that is associated with brain damage and death. Status epilepticus is defined as continuous seizure activity that lasts for more than five minutes or two or more seizures without complete recovery of consciousness. Status epilepticus can present as generalized convulsive status epilepticus and non-convulsive status epilepticus. The non-convulsive status epilepticus is characterized by persistent impaired consciousness without clinical seizure activity and generalized convulsive status epilepticus is characterized by full body motor seizures result in loss of consciousness and involve the entire brain. It is important to evaluate the etiologies of status epilepticus for timely and optimal seizure control. Causes of status epilepticus includes metabolic disturbance which includes hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, and hyperglycemia central nervous system disorder, infections, head injury, hypoxia, drug toxicity, pre-existing epilepsy, central nervous system tumors, chronic alcoholism, and strokes. Now let's talk about the pathophysiology of status epilepticus. Seizures occur when the excitatory neurotransmission overcomes inhibitory impulses in one or more brain regions. While the exact cellular mechanisms are unknown, it appears that seizure initiation is caused by an imbalance between excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmission. Glutamate is a primary excitatory neurotransmitter, stimulate postsynaptic NMDA receptors, causing neuronal depolarization. The primary inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA oppose excitation by stimulating GABA receptors, causing hyperpolarization and inhibition of postsynaptic cell membrane. In epilepsy, GABA-mediated inhibition becomes less effective, while glutamate excitatory actions are enhanced. Seizures lasting more than 30 minutes cause significant injury and neuronal loss. Systemic changes appear in two phases during status epilepticus. Phase 1 occur during the first 30 minutes. And phase 2 occurs after 30 to 60 minutes. Phase 1 is characterized by generalized convulsions, hypertension, tachycardia, fever and sweating. It also includes muscle contractions, muscle spams and respiratory compromise. And phase 2 is characterized by respiratory failure with pulmonary edema cardiac failure, hypotension, hypothermia, rhabdomyolysis and multi-organ failure. Electroencephalography or EEG test is required to identify and diagnose status epilepticus in comatose patient. EEG monitoring should be used in patients who remain unconscious after initial anti-epileptic treatment and those receiving long-term paralytic agents. CT scan and MRI scans are useful to identify traumatic injury or any evidence of infection as the cause of status epilepticus. Talking about treatment of status epilepticus. The initial approach to status epilepticus involves removing the patient from harmful surroundings and ensuring maintenance of airways, breathing and circulation. Benzodiazepines are the preferred initial drugs to stop acute seizure activity, followed by anti-epileptic drugs. Medications are given intravenously for immediate onset of action. But if IV access is not available, selected medications may be given rectally, intramuscularly or nasally. After seizures stop, identify and treat underlying causes of seizures, such as toxins, hypoglycemia, or brain injury. Hypoglycemia-induced status epilepticus is treated with intravenous dextras. So that's all for today. Hope you like this video. For more cool content about pharmacy and medicine please like and share this video. And subscribe to my channel Pharmacy D1.